This is the Audi Q4 e-tron, and it's a very, very important car because not only is it a compact SUV and everybody loves those, but it's actually the cheapest electric car Audi currently offers. And if you put those two together, you've got the recipe, at least on paper, for a very successful product indeed. And so today I want to find out whether the Q4 e-tron lives up to the hype by going through all the little bits and pieces before taking it out on the road. But before we get into the review, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. We're going to start off by getting a little bit geeky because what underpins this Q4 e-tron is actually Volkswagen's MEB platform. No, no, wait, before you switch off, this is relevant. So production platforms are pretty boring, but the Q4 e-tron shares a lot of its DNA with the Volkswagen ID3 and the Volkswagen ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq and the Cupra Born, which isn't out yet. So it's actually really hard for the car to set itself apart from its, not rivals, but siblings. But I think Audi's done a brilliant job because although it shares its underpinnings with the aforementioned cars, I think this Q4 e-tron looks completely different and is a really smart looking car, particularly at the front. Now, a lot of cars that share the same production platform can all kind of look the same, but with different company faces on them. But I think the Q4 e-tron really does look like its own thing. And yes, while this front end is distinctly Audi, I think it looks different to even other cars in the range. Much less awkward than something like an Audi Q8, which is pretty much a rebodied Urus slash Bentayga. So we've got a completely blanked off grille because, well, nothing needs to go through there. We don't have an engine. But one of the really cool things that we've got here are these matrix LED headlights. Now that's nothing new for Audis or any other car, but what you can do on the Q4 e-tron is actually come up with your own LED light signature. So when you're driving along, your headlights could look a little bit different to those of another Q4 e-tron. And there's also a light bar that runs across the width of the car which just makes the car look more premium and actually has, it works as a bit of a trick of the eye and makes the car look wider than it actually is. This isn't a big car at the end of the day and yet the Q4 e-tron still has real road presence. Now we've got a little wing at the back here, but you can actually get a different configuration of the car too. So while this is the regular SUV, you can also get a sport back that has a more coupe-like look, which cuts into boot space, but looks cooler, I guess. While I prop the bonnet open for a bit of shade because it's sweltering today, we can talk about the motor and batteries. So it all kicks off with a 168 brake horsepower motor that's slung over the rear axle and it's connected up to a 52 kilowatt hour battery that offers a range of up to 208 miles on a single charge. And that battery is located underneath the passenger compartment like all the other MEB cars for the perfect center of gravity. Now, above that is the model that we've got here, which has a 201 brake horsepower motor, and that gets a 77 kilowatt hour battery. Again, net capacity, but that can go all the way up to 316 miles of range. You'll also be able to get an even faster version soon, the Quattro, which has got a motor at the front and rear, hence Quattro, for all wheel drive, and together they produce 296 brake horsepower, which is pretty punchy. And there's a zero to 62 time of just over six seconds. Not quite Golf R territory, but I wouldn't be surprised if an S and an RS version of this arrived later and uh, would probably give the combustion cars a run for their money. Now in this regular version of the Q4 e-tron, and I mean that by it being the SUV, we've got 525 liters. And you're probably thinking if I go for the sport back, I'm gonna have barely any boot space at all. Well, not really. You only get five liters less by going for that coupe light roof line. I still would rather go for the SUV version, but you're not being penalized too much if you go for the coupe. Now, that being said, it's still smaller than what you get on other MEB cars like the Enyaq and also the ID4. But crucially, it's a little bit bigger than what you get in the Ford Mustang Mach-E. 
Now there aren't loads of little convenience options in the back, but you do get a net to divide things up. And there's also a little bit of space underneath the boot floor to store the charging cables, which is really handy because there's no frunk. As standard, the Q4 e-tron supports 100 kilowatt charging, but the higher range models support up to 125 kilowatts. Now, admittedly, that's not the fastest out there, but it's still pretty quick. If you find a suitable charger, you can get up to 80 miles of range in just 10 minutes. Admittedly, some of Audi's cheaper cars can feel a bit budget on the inside, but that's really not the case with the Q4 e-tron. And it's a real step above the likes of the Skoda Enyaq and Volkswagen ID4 as well. There's also lots of interesting bits in here that make it feel different to pretty much every other Audi. The steering wheel, for instance, is squared off at the top and the bottom. So not only does it feel really sporty, but it matches the lines of the rest of the cabin. The volume dial isn't actually a physical knob, it's a touch panel that looks like it won't work on the surface, but is actually pretty handy. Another big surprise is that you have physical buttons for the air conditioning, which kind of contrasts with the touch controls on the steering wheel that look like they're mimicking the haptic feedback buttons on the ID4, but they're not actually haptic feedback. They don't rumble or vibrate whenever you touch them. The infotainment system is the same one that you'll find in pretty much every other Audi out there. And while it functions really well, it is starting to feel a little bit dated and clunky now. And unlike the ID4's instrument panel, which is a small little screen plonked on top of the dashboard, the Audi's is fully integrated and looks much slicker. We also have wireless charging and a couple of USB-C ports, as well as a good old fashioned 12 volt charger. And while you can get fully electric seats, ours are only part electric, and it's the wrong part. Now that brings me on to trim levels and there are four different ones to choose from. There's the entry level Sport, there's the S line, you also get the launch edition and the Vorsprung. Now I'm in a launch edition at the moment, but as it's a press car, it's sort of like a pre-production car. And so the trim in here doesn't quite match up with the one that you'll get in the showroom. The rest of the car is all production ready, but some bits here and there are just not part of the trim levels. And besides, trims change all the time, so you won't go through all the little differences. What I will point out though, is that you can get leather seats if you want, even though these are cloth. And there's also something called Dynamica, which is kind of like a recycled material that's made to look a bit like suede which I think sounds really cool actually. It's all part of Audi's push to be more sustainable. It's in the back where cars like the Q4 e-tron really come into their own because compact SUVs, if they've got a big motor up front, that usually takes up quite a bit of room. So things can feel a little bit cramped in the back. Although we've got a relatively small car, I've got so much leg and headroom that I don't even feel like I'm in a small vehicle. It feels so comfortable back here. So if you're six foot and over, which I'm not, I'm just a bit under, you'll have plenty of room. The seats are also really comfy too. We've got bog standard cloth seats back here and I'm sure leather seats would be even nicer. No armrest in this model, unfortunately, but we do have a couple of USB-C ports and also climate controls. So if the driver's running low on battery and they're trying to put everything in eco mode, you can really mess with them by whacking on the air conditioning. On the road in the Q4 e-tron, and although we're in the 40, which isn't the top spec car, nor is it the bottom, it's gonna be the most popular. Audi expects most of its sales to be the 40, and it doesn't surprise me because most won't be after the ultra performance of the Quattro, but they're gonna want a bit more punch and a bit more range from something like the 40. So what's it like? Well, I'm starting things off in just regular drive and also uh, in eco mode. That means that if I lift off the accelerator, there is barely any energy recovery at all. In fact, I can read on my gauge at the moment that there's none. What I can do though, is I've got a couple of paddles on the back of the steering wheel. So if I pull to the left, I can increase my regeneration by up to three steps. So there's light, kind of medium, and then there's a heavy regen. So I'm going down a hill at the moment, which you can kind of see from the camera tilting. And instead of using the brakes, I'm just using the regen. So not got my foot on the pedals, I'm just using the paddles. When it gets a bit steeper, I'm just pulling on the left paddle to increase the braking. Now I've heard that this only comes as standard on the 
kind of two range topping cars. Below that, the option is there. You've just got to go through the menu. You won't be able to adjust the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. But even in eco mode, it doesn't feel like a slouch. Sure, it's not ultra fast. We've got a 0 to 62 time of about eight and a half seconds. So it's not the quickest thing on the planet. But you always feel as though you're on top of the car's power, which is just typical of an EV, really, with near instant torque. You never feel like you're going to be really struggling to get up to pace. Of course, we can also whack it into dynamic mode as well, which is the sportiest setting. And it doesn't feel actually that much faster because the eco mode is still really good. But what it does feel like is that it's just a little bit stiffer, so you can kind of feel a few more kind of like bumps and grooves in the road. And the steering also sharpens up quite a lot too. So if you do like really quick changes of direction, the car responds really well. It's typical Audi of where there's no real sensation through the steering wheel at all, but it doesn't really matter when it's something like a Q4. This isn't a ultra performance car and it still feels really nice. And when you put it in dynamic, there's a little bit more weight to it. And again, in true Audi fashion as well, there's also an individual mode. So let's say if you wanted the car to be just a little bit quicker and the steering a bit sharper, but you wanted the suspension to slacken off a bit, then you can do so. Just whack it into individual and customize it the way that you want. Now we're on the motorway. I also want to talk about some of the tech in here because it's really cool. So not only do I have adaptive cruise control, so while I've got it on at the moment, it's monitoring the speed of the car ahead of me, and if they slow down, I'll slow down. And you've also got a lane keep assist with that too, so it's kind of semi-autonomous driving. But the thing I absolutely love the most is the augmented reality head-up display. This is so freaking cool, and it makes me feel like I'm a fighter pilot. It detects the car in front and then puts a green bar below it to identify that that's the, your target, essentially. And like a normal adaptive cruise control, I can also adjust the... Uh, the distance between myself and the car. So if I knock it back, I'll see that green arrow move back a little bit and we'll start to give the car just a bit more space. But I think the coolest part of it is to do with the sat-nav system. So I've seen these augmented reality head-up displays before, but this one is really cool because it projects a nice big image of the direction where you need to go. And it's done really slickly as well. So it's this really crisp, sharp looking, arrow that comes up on the screen with a really slick animation. They've done it really well indeed. This really does feel like the best car that has come from this platform so far. Definitely drives a lot better than an ID4. It feels more luxurious on the inside compared to an Enyaq for obvious reasons. This is more expensive. But just as a complete package, it ticks a lot of boxes. The brakes aren't as good as I was expecting. Sometimes you've got to give it a bit more pressure than you were initially think you're going to need but other than that this is a superb EV and definitely the best on this platform. Audi's really hit the nail on the head with this. So the Q4 e-tron is really very good and at £40,000 it's a really strong contender for the likes of the Ford Mustang Mach-E and while the Tesla Model Y is not available in the UK just yet, it's probably going to be priced really similar to the Q4 e-tron. And yes, you can spend near 55 grand on one of these, but that's pretty much the case across all electric cars in this area of the market. I think, personally, this is the best MEB car made so far, but if the 40 grand price tag seems a little bit too steep, head over to yesauto.com because we've got plenty of deals on new and used EVs.